the implications of mankind being an early civilization of the universe. Have human beings turned up to the cosmic party early? Are we that group of super keen narcs who don't know the meaning of the term fashionably late? Apparently so. According to NASA, whose research into the composition of the universe seems to indicate that life on Earth has developed quickly in comparison to other worlds. We may not be the very first civilization, but many signs do point to us being one of the fastest to shoot our biological load and form into an advanced race. So, if that's true, then what are our responsibilities? How must we act going forward? What are the implications of mankind being one of the earliest civilizations in the universe? Number 3. We will miss a lot. The basis for this video is a theoretical study performed by Molly Peoples and Peter Beruzzi of the Space Telescope Science Institute, which drew upon data collected by the Hubble Space Telescope and the Kepler Space Observatory. Using information we've learned about the past, present, and future composition of our universe, the study concluded that Earth is among the first 8% of all habitable worlds that will ever be created. We are not the iPhone 1, but we might be the iPhone 2 or the 2G. It's hard to say. In 13.8 billion years, the universe has created hundreds of billions of galaxies. And although star formation is slowing down, planetary formation is not. Within the Milky Way alone, there are an estimated 1 billion habitable worlds. But the vast majority of planets will be born 100 to 1 trillion years from now, and the last stars which support them are expected to burn out in 100 trillion years. If we use this figure as an endpoint for the universe, the time it has left can be conveyed using the cosmic calendar. Traditionally, the cosmic calendar scales the age of the universe down to a 12-month period, starting with a Big Bang. On this scale, the Milky Way formed on March 16th, followed by the solar system on September 2nd, where life developed on Earth 12 days later. This led to the evolution of mammals on the 26th of December, with anatomically modern humans only arriving on the 31st of December at 8 minutes to midnight. Meaning that in the context of the universe's age today, we are latecomers. But if we use this same system to scale down the predicted timeline of the entire universe, we are super early. One day on the original cosmic calendar is 37.8 million years. There are 100 trillion years left until the last stars die. So this equates to 2,645,502 cosmic calendar days, or 7,243 years. This clearly isn't going to work, so we need a new system. 100 trillion divided by 365 gives us approximately 273 billion years per day on our new cosmic calendar, which equates to 11.4 billion years per hour. If we use this to calculate the time in the context of one year representing the universe's 100 trillion year lifespan, it would appear that mankind currently exists at 12 minutes past one on the 1st of January. Happy New Year, everyone. Let's get drunk. We've got 100 trillion years to deal with the hangover. Number two, we are teachers. If humanity exists upon one of the first 8% of habitable worlds, then it follows that only a small fraction of these will develop advanced life. It's possible we are currently the only intelligent race within an area many light years across, but it won't always be this way. Eventually, others will develop within our own cosmic backyard. When they do, they might look to humanity for inspiration, considering us their universal ancestors. Unless we've obliterated all traces of ourselves, which is not entirely unlikely. On Earth, 
Modern civilizations draw inspiration from the language, culture, and ideas of our earliest races. It was the Sumerians of the late Neolithic and Middle Bronze Age who invented the wheel, agriculture, map-making, the concept of recorded time, and mathematics. These ideas were built upon by later civilizations, who in turn inspire and inform our ways today. Knowledge is easily spread across continents and languages, but can it be spread across stars, planets, and species? Let's hope so, because humanity's achievements may prove vitally important to the development of others. Some ideas, such as the concept of numbers or the study of atoms, may be ubiquitous and only a matter of time before separate civilizations discover them. But depending on when intelligent life arrives in the cosmos, there are some things they may never come to know, because they turned up too late to observe them. One advantage our prematurely born race has had is we've been able to trace our universe's past due to the observational evidence the Big Bang left behind. We've seen how galaxies develop, how the universe expanded, and where it is heading thanks to the light and electromagnetic radiation left behind. However, in one trillion years, the expansion of space will erase this evidence. Early civilizations like us, therefore, have a duty to preserve the origin of the universe and ensure this vital knowledge is passed on to those who come to exist in our stead. Number one, we will become leaders. As well as passing on ideas and observations, it is also important that we set a good example for how an advanced civilization conducts itself. Personally, I don't want our race to be remembered as bumbling idiots who spent the whole time fighting and jerking it until we blew ourselves to pieces. And nor would it be pleasant for humanity to end up as the Neanderthals of the universe, an inferior race wiped out as soon as a superior one arrived. Humans must become the kind of advanced race we would want to learn from. As one of the earliest civilizations, we will become standard bearers for our corner of the galaxy. And depending on how successful we are, we may even come to rule the Milky Way, should we endure long enough. As an early civilization, we have an advantage if we ever decide to colonize other solar systems. The Kardashev scale, which ranks a civilization's power, separates advanced races into three different types based on their abilities. Kardashev-1 people can harness all of the energy that reaches its planet. Kardashev-2 civilizations can harness the entire power output of their sun. And Kardashev-3 people are capable of using all the energy expended by their galaxy. Estimates place humanity at 100 to 200 years behind Type 1 status, several thousand from Type 2, and a hundred thousand to one million years from achieving Type 3 status. That's Kardashev, not diabetes. So, with our head start consisting of hundreds of millions, possibly billions of years, galactic colonization seems achievable we could easily become the dominant species in our galaxy. We would set the rules. We would decide how new civilizations are treated and contacted. We may even become the seeders of life ourselves, helping to speed up the natural process of the universe by dispatching organisms to habitable worlds across the Milky Way. The earliest civilizations on Earth created a template for our modern societies today. They waged war, they improved themselves, they faced horror, and they created beauty. Our kind almost died out on several occasions in the process. But without such risks being taken by our forebears, we wouldn't be here to tell their tales and sustain their legacy. Therefore, we too must venture out into the universe to make our mark. But hold up. If one day we might be able to colonize the universe, and if we're not the absolute oldest race, why hasn't it been done already? We're going to attempt to answer this in our bonus video, Where Are Our Masters? Which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strangemysteries. 
For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then that's full. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.